Hello, truth seekers and light workers and light warriors and light bearers. Happy Monday. Today's Monday. Okay, so this is a two part message. We have my message and then we have a message from the sponsors as well. So the first message is about monkeys. I'm going to talk about monkeys. I'm going to give you three stories about monkeys. So see you in the next part. Monkeys are maligned. They're, they're maligned. Monkeys are, we treat them really badly. And what I mean by that is, I don't mean, well, probably we do treat monkeys really badly. I, I wouldn't be surprised. But what I mean is, when we talk about monkeys, we talk about them really badly. We call people here in the UK a cheeky monkey. We say things like, yeah, monkey see, monkey do, yeah? We talk about the monkey mind, which is the, the nonsensical blah, blah, blah mind. Um, we talk about, he's up to monkey business, which is not good. He's monkeying around. It's not good. What's the problem with monkeys? What problem have we got with monkeys? Well, I tell you what I think it is. I think it has to do with the fact that we were sold by those, those people who wanted to take us away from God, that we came from monkeys, that we were monkeys, and then we developed into this beautiful being that we are. And so I think it's kind of like we look at monkeys and say, ha, we, we were you and now we have evolved. We're so much better than you. And I think that's why we kind of hold them in disdain. Okay. But hey, I'll tell you one thing about monkeys. If you were in a room with a monkey, he could probably rip your body apart. He could rip your limb from limb. So, you know, we've got to respect them. Respect monkeys, because if you start monkeying around with you, you could be in trouble. Anyway, never have a monkey as a pet. Never. Okay, I'm just asking for trouble. And if anyone's been to Gibraltar, and had experience with the monkeys there, you know you don't have them as pets, okay? Even the little ones are really strong, they're gonna rip your nose off. Anyway, why am I getting talk? Why am I talking about monkeys? I wanna tell you some stories that are about monkeys. The first story is about a group of monkeys that were used in a test. And what they did was they had a load of monkeys in a cage, all right, living together. Uh, as monkeys do and what they did was they put a plate a metal plate in the cage and they electrified it and of course what happened was a monkey jumped onto the metal plate I mean it wasn't a high electrical charge but enough to give them a shock the monkey jumped onto the plate and it absolutely got a shock it screamed and of course all the monkeys realized that that metal plate was a problem and so what they did was they never went back they never went back and never touched that metal plate because they're clever I mean they're not stupid are they and so what they started to do was they kept taking one of the monkeys out that knew about the plate and replace it with a new monkey and what did they do well what they did was as soon as the monkey came in every time it went near the plate the rest of the monkeys would go crazy screaming and warning it and so the new monkey very quickly understood that that plate was not to be touched and so they went along replacing the monkeys and bringing in a new one and every time the new one came in the monkeys went crazy and warned it not to go on the plate until in the end they'd replaced all of the monkeys that were originally there when that first monkey got electric shock there were no old monkeys. And yet, every time they put a new monkey in and a new monkey went to that plate, and there was no electricity, by the way, they'd only had it on once, and then they turned it off. Every time the monkey went in, the rest of the monkeys would stop it. And they would even, if it was trying to go near, they would drag it away from the plate. And none of them had actually seen the plate electrify anybody. And isn't that 
just like the way that humankind is and that we we control our peers when we actually don't have the information now monkeys are monkeys okay monkey say monkey do we are human beings with our faculties we are sovereign human beings we have a soul we have a mind and so what we should do is we should never ever rely on the opinion of other people to make a judgment about what is right and what is wrong people know shit they know f all okay they know what they know because that's what they've been told and who knows the person that is telling you that you should or shouldn't do something maybe they weren't even there at the beginning maybe they're a new monkey and they're just repeating what they've been told okay do it see it with your own eyes do your own investigation don't just rely on links from other people look for yourself so the second story about the monkeys is is really not so much a story but it's about the way that we get triggered so what would happen is the man would roll his piano out into the street and he would put his hat on the ground and he would have a little monkey sitting on the top and just before he started to play he would pull the monkey's tail and the mon monkey would dance and he would play and people would pay money because it was very funny watching a dancing monkey and a man playing the piano and so every time that the man wanted the monkey to dance he would just pull its tail and the monkey would dance until finally one day the monkey decided to bite the man's finger and it never danced again it ran away why because monkeys can run away very quickly you can't catch a monkey and when they say slowly slowly catch a monkey that's not really true because monkeys can run really quickly so the question that I'm asking you is how many times in a day or in a week does somebody pull your tail and how many times do you dance now what that is we and again our society loves these new these things that everybody understands I've been triggered I've been triggered somebody's pulled your tail and you've danced now the pulling of the tail is not nice. People shouldn't pull your tail. It's not nice. But what's even worse than that is the fact that you dance. And so the question is, why are you dancing? Well, it's because you're accustomed to having your tail pulled and getting angry about it. But what would happen if you didn't dance? If you didn't dance to the tune of the people pulling your tail? What if you walked away? What if you smiled? What if you said something really profound and wonderful? What if you withdrew the emotional reaction from that person and didn't dance anymore? How do you do that? Well, go back in my videos and look for EFT, tapping. You can tap away these links that you have, these angers that you have, these reactions. Look for havening, you can haven away that. Look for EMI, eye movement integration. I haven't done a, a thing on it because really it's something you do with somebody else, but you can do it on your own by getting the feeling and then move it, doing eye movement, okay? R eye movement like this. It works incredibly fast. So if you find that you are not in control you don't have sovereignty of your own emotions because somebody pulls your tail and you dance like a little monkey then you're a naughty little monkey and you don't need to dance okay you know when you stop dancing just as the monkey stopped dancing when it realized hang on a minute i'm not even in control of myself i dance he pulls my tail i dance well, bugger off. And the monkey turned around and bit his finger and ran away. Maybe that's what we need to do. 
in a metaphorical sense. Don't go around biting people's fingers, okay? Because that just will get you into trouble. All right, so the last story about the monkeys is a fascinating one. And it's about a group of monkeys that were in the zoo. Now, we all know that zoo life is not very nice for monkeys. And this group of monkeys uh, were all in this one cage together and they were all getting very poorly mentally. Their mental health was going down. They could see that, the vets could see, because they were starting to do this repetitive type of behavior, pacing, um, you know, becoming obsessive, compulsive. And this was all a sign of the mental health. Why? Because there was no stimulation at all. Same thing every day. And so what the animal psychologist said was this. Well, if they were living in the wild, what would happen is every now and again, a threat would appear. And that threat would create some kind of unity amongst them. And so what they did was they created a paper tiger full size, life size, very realistic, but made of paper. And what they would do is, they would wheel the paper tiger through the cage. So that the monkeys looked and saw that and thought it was a real tiger. When they did that, the monkeys would go absolutely crazy, wild, jumping around, screaming. But after, what they would do is they would start to form groups, teams. The big ones would protect the little ones. They would start to, to huddle together. And what happened was they noticed this tremendous increase in the mental health because they, the, the danger that they were facing helped them to unite and become one. And so once a month they would wheel the paper tiger through and the monkeys would go crazy. And then they would all be friends and unified and, and happy for another month until the paper tiger came through. And we are living the paper tiger. The paper tiger is being passed through our cage at the moment and we're going wild. But trust, today is the 21st of December. It's the solstice. It's the alignment of the planets that hasn't happened in 800 years. We are in the time of change. Today is the start of the age of Aquarius. And we are moving there now. Okay. What is the age of Aquarius? It's many things, but one of the things it is, is unity. We are going to see mankind uniting uniting against this evil force, uniting against what they're trying to do to us. And so, we've had our paper tiger. Now, it's time for us to unite. Because together we're stronger. Together we are invincible. Together we are legion. And that's where we're going to be. And so, from now, going forward, be prepared to see change happening rapidly. Change that you might never have imagined could happen. And they always say it's always darkest before the dawn. I don't know if that's true. Maybe it is. But I think I've stayed up camping all night and, and it was pretty dark. Um, and then the dawn came and then I could see. So this is where we are. So have faith. It's all going to be great we have not only do we have good people on the earth the white hats working for us not only do we have them we have the higher beings who are working for us and not only do we have the higher beings that are working for us we have the planets aligning for us and not only do we have the planets aligning for us well we have god on our side as well so what else could we want so now a word from our sponsors. Okay, I'm just joking. Just, I want to tell you about a little conversation I had with the emissaries. And I, I must tell you that when I talk to the emissaries, depending on where, where I am in my mind, sometimes I'm not happy and, and, and I demand information from them. You know, and, I, and I'm a bit sort of tough with them. Okay, sometimes I'm not. 
And sometimes they're tough with me. And sometimes they give me a, a bit of a slapped bottom, sometimes. And that's fine. That's what it's all about, isn't it? So I said to them a few days ago, for God's sake, when is this going to be over? When is all of this going to be over? I'm tired. And I think I was speaking for a very, very, very large part, portion of the world when I said that. We're all tired of this, this bullshit, these lies, this, this myth that has been woven into a narrative that, that has so many holes in it that it's, it, it's so annoying because it's so obvious. As, as a good friend of mine said, putting her hands like this, she said, it's just so clear to me, okay? And it is, but it isn't to everybody. So that was what I asked. When is it going to be over? When, when, when? Dime cuando, cuando, cuando. It's the same song. Um, and they said, it's not a matter of when. It's not a matter of time. It's a matter of vibration and frequency. Now, what, what they said was, when the vibration and the frequency hits a certain level, then the shift is going to happen very, very rapidly. And so the, I, whenever I try to get them to pin, pin them down to time, they won't go into it. And what they say is that they're, in their realm, there is no time. Time is, is meaningless. It's just it seems very real here. And so they, they, they tend to talk about when it's ready. It's pretty much what they say. When it's ready, all right? That's when it'll happen. Um, but what they're saying is this, and the, the, the feeling that I got was there's a, there's a great awakening scheduled. Now, it's happening, right? The great awakening's happening. Goodness, some people have woken up you know, 30 years ago, 40 years ago. But there's a great awakening scheduled. And what they said was not the one that's just happened, because there's a lot of people awake, but a really big one. A very big, and it, it's almost like a, a, a revelation, because we are in the times of revelation. Bigger than anything that's happened yet. So, and they say, they say that that is going to happen when the vibration and the frequency is right. Well, today, look, we're just moving into the age of Aquarius. The whole thing is shifting. But this was the advice that they gave me. And they said this. Time passes. That's the only thing. The only certainty other than death, isn't it? That time is going to pass here in this realm. Time passes. And they said, look back on the year that you've had. I mean, this year, you know, everyone says, oh, 2020 is just the most horrible year ever. And they said, look back at this year and look back at what you've created. And when I look at my year, I, I specifically, when this first happened, I said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dedicate my time and my focus on creating as many things as I possibly can. And so I've, you know, I just did project after, I've done project after project and I continue to do so. And that can be in work and it can be in my, at home, you know, putting things right, building things, creating things. Uh, we published a book this year, just lots and lots and lots of things I've done. Okay, I'm in the process, I'll talk about this later, I'm in the process of, of finishing off uh, an album, and it's an album about um, about the Great Awakening, it's about what's happening now, it's all, all about that. Um, so, that's what they said, look back on the year and notice that this year hasn't been a bad year, for, for me, they were talking specifically to me. But they said, this is the message that we want you to, to pass out, is for everybody, to create, keep creating. They said that some people, because it's a natural thing to say, well, well, as long as this is happening, I'm just going to put everything on hold. Some people have put their lives on hold and they're saying, no, no, no. And they repeated this, they repeated, they just said, keep creating. And they said it over and over and over and over again. Keep creating, keep creating. And what they were saying was that we are creators. That's what we are here for, to create our own reality. And so what we do is if we focus on creation, and that can be in any aspect, 
That can be just anything, anything that you love doing. What they're saying is do more of it. Do it. Don't wait. Do it. Because it's the act of creating that is going to change the vibration and the frequency. Because we are creators. When we are creating, we, when we create well, we are in our highest spiritual um, point. And so it's very important that we just keep creating. Um, and so they said, this is the words that they left me with, and I'll leave them with you. Do good. Make lives better. Help the world to be a better place. And then they finished with these words. The time always passes. And if you create before you know it, you'll be in paradise. Okay? So, nice and clear, the message. Let's get creating. Let's get using our creative ability. Get our creative juices going. And we will bring what we want. Okay, I leave you. I'll see you on Friday. Have a lovely week. And enjoy today. Do a bit of meditation. Do some pondering. And if you've got a camera, get in. If you've got clear skies, get out and look at the planet, the Jupiter and Saturn. You get the, they're going to be the closest to the Earth that them that have been for 800 years. Have a look. See if you can get some photos. Okay. And enjoy today. This is the change. This is the track change. This is where we start moving toward good.